Hello and welcome to FS Golf. Uh, I'm Frank Stranick, one of the Swing Surgeon Certified Club Fitters. Today I want to talk to you about uh, driver fitting, more specifically driver fitting for length, and how that applies to the Swing Surgeon Swing, or the PPGS Swing. Um, initially I just want to talk a little bit about how you purchase your clubs. If you've already purchased a club, uh, and you're having difficulty, which I would suspect you might be if you're trying to execute the PPGS swing. Uh, the reason being is that the drivers that you purchase off of the rack today are generally 45 to 46 and a half inches long. And uh, with the vertical nature of the peak performance golf swing, it is impossible to put that club uh, back on the ball at the right vertical swing plane uh, at the length that the clubs are being sold. So if you have done that, uh, you need to schedule a, a visit with one of the Swing Surgeon Certified Club Fitters and uh, let them take a look at your club and uh, see what can be done uh, to get that club to a length that you can use uh, consistently. If you haven't purchased one, uh, then you're in a lot better shape. I would say schedule a fitting or a discussion, if you want, uh, with one of the certified uh, club fitters. Find out a little bit about what length you need. Behind me here I have a number of uh, shafts. You'll see one with a driver head sitting on top of it. Uh, they're quarter inch separations and I have shafts that go all the way from 41 and a half inches to 45 inches, one quarter inch separation. And that's the way I find the proper length for the player wherever they hit it most consistently nearest to center uh, that's the length that we want and then we work on what the weight of that club should be. Now uh, one of the problems that there is today in the golf industry is that 90 percent of the people buy product off of the rack uh, based on price or color or impulse or marketing hype uh, regardless of whether that club fits them or not. I understand the pressures of marketing hype. You're, you're inundated with it everywhere you go if you read a golf magazine or watch the TV. So I want to talk to you a little bit about length. And uh, you probably have to hold Don down in his chair when I show you this club. This is uh, mine from 1962. I purchased this set of clubs. It's a uh, Tommy Armour McGregor 234. For cement head, probably about 160 cc's, I would guess. Uh, it's 43 and uh, an eighth inches long. This has not been touched. This is exactly the way the club was purchased. It has a steel shaft in it. Uh, it's a D7 swing weight, and it weighs 385 grams. Quite heavy for when you look at today's uh, drivers. Then I got another one over here. This one. Uh, has been touched. You can see what it is. Uh, it came to me uh, over 45 inches and uh, so I, I took the club and uh, I made it to a length that uh, could be used. Currently it's 43 and 3 quarter inches. Now when you do that uh, you have to be concerned about some issues. Uh, first of all when you cut the club, the, the shaft of the club, where do you cut it from? Do you cut it from the tip or do you cut it from the butt end? You can cut it from either, but there's things that happen when you cut it from one end or the other. If you cut it from the tip end, then you're going to change the flex of this club. All right. If you cut it from the butt end, you'll probably change the flexibility feel. It might change the flex, uh, maybe a tenth of a flex, but not, not appreciably. The other thing that's going to happen is when you cut it, you're going to change the weighting and balance point of the club. So you have to see what you can do to bring that weighting and balance point back to a, to a, a level that is consistent with what the player wants in feel. He's got to be able to track this club in rotation, otherwise he's not going to have a chance of putting the head back on the ball uh, consistently in the proper spot. If you look on the back of this, you'll see a a load of lead tape. That, that's the easiest way to add weight back on. There's 
10 grams of weight added back to this particular club. Um, there's uh, an alternative way to adding weight, and that is to use a uh, lightweight grip. Win makes a lightweight grip. Uh, Golf Pride has come out with a, a lightweight grip, and uh, it's uh, fairly easy to put on. They're, they're sort of flimsy, but they're fairly easy to put on. And uh, that will give you back five swing weight points in the head end because you're taking the weight 25 grams out of the grip end. However, if you like bigger grips, like mid-sized grips, you've got to understand that you're adding a lot of weight back to the grip end and you're going to have to put more weight in the head end. With some of the newer uh, commercial models, as you can see, this has a screw in the bottom here. Uh, there's no way to go into the head like we used to to put, uh, put weight in there except for drilling a hole somewhere in the head. Uh, if this screw was com would come out of here or if some other clubs that you might have has a, an adjustable screw that can come out, we can add weight in there. But the whole thing here is to get this club back to the proper length in order for you to be able to swing that club uh, correctly with the PPGS golf swing. Now, as you know, the Peak Performance Golf Swing is a relatively short uh, three-quarter swing, uh, more vertical and uh, limited turn, single plane type swing. Uh, when you bring the club back into uh, the impact area, the vertical swing planes, not the path, but the vertical swing plane, uh, is going to be somewhere between 55 and 60 degrees. The path at the top of the swing, looking at Don's swing, is about 70 degrees. So it's a very upright uh, type swing. And in order to uh, get the club head back on the ball correctly, if you have average length arms for your body, uh, you'll find that uh, you're going to be in the 43s, like 43 and a half or 43 and three quarter, 44 maybe if you're quite tall. Uh, I'm six foot tall and I have average size arms and my driver is 43 and a half inches. I work with Dave Seaman a lot. His driver is 43 and three quarters. I think he's a little flatter in his plane than I am. So when you are thinking about buying a club, my recommendation is that you start with the certified club fitter. You'll, you'll come out way ahead. There's just such pressure on the commercial grade clubs to sell, sell, sell. And they're not in the business that we are. Uh, we are custom fit, custom built, one club at a time to your specifications. That's the mantra that we work under. Their mantra is throughput, and uh, they have to sell what they have on the rack. I very much enjoy the Peak Performance Golf Swing. I've been using it now for two years. And I have found that uh, shortening the club or reducing the length of the club, uh, many of the people who come here to see me will say, well, gee, I'm afraid to shorten the club because I'm going to lose distance. Actually, it's just the other way around. If you take a look at the face of your driver, if you've had it for a while, there is on there what I call forensics. Uh, you're going to have marks that are going to be across the bottom. It will show you that you are either swinging outside in or inside out. Rarely do you see them come straight back the head like this. You'll see marks on the face, uh, which will tell you where you're hitting the ball on the face. And you'll see marks up on the top of the club up here with scratches. Normally they're out to the toe side and that's telling you that your angle of attack is downward not upward. But if you shorten the club and you're able to bring the club back to the ball properly and you have a uh, understanding of where the club is during the rotation or the swing you will be able to increase your distance, not decrease your distance. Why? You're going to find that you're going to be consistently right around the sweet spot of the club. And that's the place you have to be to get the most distance out of your club. Distance is one thing. You know, when you go out to get this 
super long club, they'll tell you it's going to hit it further. Well, it does, and back into what I call W cubed, woods, weeds, and water. None of those are good for the score. What you want to do is think more about accuracy and consistency. Where do I have to put this ball so that I can play my next shot as well as I played my first shot? And if you have a curving fairway and all you do is slice, you better hope it curves to the right. Um, because you're going to be in trouble. So, think about driver length the next time you're purchasing a driver. First think about coming to your certified swing surgeon club fitter and get the right length. And then work with him. We all sell clubs, uh, uh, woods and irons, and I'll be very honest with you, there is nothing uh, sacred about the ones that you buy off the rack. They don't hit it further. I know the marketing says they hit it further, but they don't. The USGA controls what happens with a golf head. And any club that you purchase from your certified swing surgeon club fitter will do the same task as that which you'll do off the rack. So come see us. We'll be glad to help you. Uh, if you just want to talk about it, I'm open to talking about anything about golf clubs. So please give me a call or uh, one of the sw swing surgeon club fitters that's in your area can find me on www.fsgolf.net, quite easy, and uh, I'll be very happy to answer any and all questions you might have. But think about length, it's a critical element in the swing. If you have the wrong length, you're not going to be able to play your best golf, okay? Have a good day, enjoy your golf, and uh, we'll see you on the next trip. Bye now.